All right, we're live. What is that? <laughs> Good evening, Facebook world. We are live. My name is Katie Day with the Movie the Texas team. I am joined by Nikki Graham and Paige Bowman. Uh, Nikki, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, put, I'm put Nikki. Her on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I'm Nikki. I am one of the agents on the Movie the Texas team with Katie Day. So I'm happy to be here. We talk some real estate. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Paige, introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Paige Bowman. Who, who, I, is, who is Paige Bowman? Take it away. Take it away, Bob. Uh, uh, so I'm Paige Bowman. I am a loan officer. Uh, the um, at, Well, I don't know where I'm at right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm a loan officer at Movement Mortgage. Um, I have been in the real estate world basically my entire life, um, but I've been in the mortgage business for seven years or going on seven years, and I love my job. I say that every time, but I do. If it's true, you know, can't. Uh, can't Even on bad days, I love my job. Um, well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, I feel what that way about real estate. What about me? Hi, guys. My name is Katie Day. I'm the team leader of the Movie to Texas team down here in Houston, Texas. Uh, enjoy my Tuesday evening hangout, bi-weekly Tuesday evening hangout with Nikki and Paige. Um, if you guys are out there watching, let us know where you are watching from. That would be great. Um, and if you guys have questions in regards to purchasing a home in the greater Houston area or in regards to mortgages or just anything about Houston, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. Um, so it has been two weeks since we've hung out um, with each other via the internet. Um, how have you guys been? What's new? How's life? <laughs> Don't both jump time? at once. Well, I think we're all um, defrosted. It was 80 today in Houston. Uh, Never fails. If you hate the weather, wait a week. It'll completely change. Um, <laughs> yeah. Other than being cold and feeling like I feel like on Monday morning, I woke up and I was hanging out with Katie in Colorado. Well, yeah. oh, because it was so cold. It was cold and snowy. And I, my dog was obsessed. And I was like, don't get used to this, buddy. This is not a, this isn't real life. Is your, is your dog a Texas dog? Has uh... He is a uh, Texas born, raised, and bred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So one thing that we were talking about before getting on the stream this evening was kind of about what's going on in the Houston real estate market right now and like what we're seeing as far as inventory. And I was actually just looking up where we are as far as months of inventory on the market today. Um, so months of inventory is kind of a relative term that we use in the real estate world. Um, which basically means that if um, no more homes came on the market, homes continue to sell at the pace that they had been selling, um, in how much time would we run out of homes, right? So normally, like we see anywhere between three to six months of inventory on the market. Um, that's generally what we would call a balanced market. Under three months is going to be leaning more towards a seller's market. And over six months is going to be leaning more towards a buyer's market. Um, so right now we are sitting at 1.7 months of inventory, which is crazy because on Saturday when I did my market update, we were I think at 1.8 or 1.9 and now we're at mm -hmm. 1.7. So kind of crazy. Um, we're sitting at 15,103 active listings on the market right now. Um, at this time last year, um, so February 2020, we had 29,459 listings. So we are at a 48.7% decrease year over year. How crazy is that? It's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> to be out there in it. <laughs> you know, like, um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, uh, it's just really surprising to me. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things continue to trend as we move through the year. Cause like even looking at like the historic count of listings last year, like, March, April, we were in the 30,000s. And then like May was 29, June was 27, July was 26. And then like, it starts like dropping, like August was 24,000, September was 23,000, October was 22,000, November was 21,000. And then December was 19, January was 18. And now we're at like, whatever I just said, 15,000. So like, it just like 
inventory is decreasing pretty significantly. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's been interesting to see for sure. Um, you know, I haven't really ever been in, in such a strong seller's market before. Um, Paige, I know you, how long did you say you've been in mortgages? Seven years, but I've never been even, well, I did. I crested at the end. I started right as we were swinging out of a seller's market in 14. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, watching from Oklahoma, planning to move to Houston in April. Very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, no, so that's, I, I've never really been in such a strong seller's market. Um, it's definitely interesting to see. Um, you know, I think we've always seen, um, you know, a very busy market in like probably the 250 or less price point, but now we're starting to see it kind of creep up higher and higher, um, you know, and, and in neighborhoods we haven't seen before. So um, it's definitely interesting for me, um, you know, in, in being around that. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we've kind of always said about um, the uh, market and about like the decrease in inventory that we've been seeing and the increase in prices is like, interest rates have, have been at all time historic lows, which, you know, has been super helpful for buyers and their purchasing power. Um, I've seen a ton of articles over the past week, um, you know, financially related to the stock market, to the Fed, to treasury yields, to interest rates. Um, Paige, dumb it down for me here. What What's <laughs> going on with the mortgage market these days? I will tell you that my phone has been ringing off the wall since probably Thursday or Friday of last week, just people Pause. asking. Oh yeah. Pause for one second. Do, you said off the wall. Do you have a landline at your house? Um, <laughs> no, but at my no at the office, people call my landline hater. Okay, okay, my mistake. My I mistake. love a landline. I love being able to just like pick it up and then like. Slam it. <laughs> um, I'm always, I'm always very impressed and concerned with your cultural references page. Like you're younger than I am yet. Sometimes <laughs> you say these things like that I'm just not, not too sure about, but anyways, I digress Paige, <laughs> If I didn't know anything about mortgages, how would you explain what's going on in the financial markets and how that relates to mortgage interest rates and what just give me the, give me the scoop. My, well, my first words out of my mouth would be don't panic. Um, because we we knew that this was coming, right? We we knew in, in people that work in the industry, we knew it was coming, right? Um, we had kind of been warned that rates would tick up this year, but that in no way, shape or form means that your purchasing power is drastically changing back to what it was in 2018 or even 2019. Rates have gone up very slightly, sometimes as low as an eighth of a percent, which is 0.125%. In some cases, they have gone up 0.3%. But that's for a very niche market. So we're we're seeing it change your overall purchasing power by fifteen to maybe twenty five dollars a month, which is nothing, okay. right? I mean, I literally spent fifteen dollars at Starbucks today for coffee for the team. So it's like when you think about it, it's it's like four coffees is fifteen dollars, and so that's what your payment is changing by the rate shifting just a little bit with the ten year Treasury yield. And a lot of people ask me, like, what is the 10 year treasury yield and how does it relate to mortgages? Um, I would definitely suggest if you are interested in it to do a little bit of digging. There are some really cool articles out there for people who enjoy stuff like that. Um, I, I, you know, <laughs> is that just me? Is it only me? Am I the only person? Do you also enjoy a good spreadsheet <laughs> after a long day? Yeah. Yes, I get that from my mother. <laughs> Old Kel. Um, <laughs> with, with that being said, should I should I drop the one that uh, you had sent earlier in the in the comments? Where? Which one? Yeah, you had sent one over to me earlier. Yes, yes, yes. yes, I'm sorry. Yes, drop that in the comments. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Watch. Which one? Yeah. yeah. So Market Watch is a great place to look at just for everything market related, um, but ex especially for the ten year Treasury yield. So how are the ten year? How is the ten year Treasury yield and mortgages related? Um, it it. Basically, with any bonds, the treasury prices go up, and so and and the yield kind of drops. So, the, I'm trying to think of the way the easiest way to explain this for someone who has no idea what I'm talking about. Um, so, basically, the the treasury yield is the safest place to invest in, right? Because it's pretty steady eddy for the most part. Obviously, last year was a little bit wild. Um, but um, it, it's steady, um, and I'm actually going to quote this article, 
it's for investors who want a steady and safe return compared to the interest rates of all fixed income products. So basically what that means is it's, it's almost like a short term CD or, or money market money. So it's just kind of easy money. So with that being said, when the market is reacting to what's going on throughout the world, in some cases, you might see an uptick in the 10 year treasury yield. Well, Europe, several different countries in Europe released, released in, uh, financial information um, on Friday, which caused the uptick that we're seeing t today and yesterday. That will go, it will go back down, but we know that it's going to increase. And I think as you posted today, Katie, we might see it go to 3%, but I mean, that's historic, that's still historically low, right? I mean, like 3% is extremely low and extremely cheap money that you're borrowing. Yeah, I always tell people when they like are concerned about interest rates that are over 3% or over, you know, whatever, to like go to your parents and ask them what they bought their first home at. And I almost, yeah. you know, can guarantee you, almost, depending on how old you are, uh, that if you talk to your parents, they're going to tell you something that's double digits. Like, so it's just crazy to me that like, you know, the 20 somethings to 30 somethings now that are buying either their first or second home, 30 somethings buying their second home, like, are like, oh my God, you know, 3% or 4%, you know, th this is so crazy. I'm like, go talk to your parents, like, and see what they say, because it's, it's just, it's crazy to me that, you know, they were buying houses in double digit interest rates. And like, that was just normal and fine. Yeah. 12, 15, 16% adjustable rate monthly, not just annually, or not just every three to five years, like some people think of, they adjusted monthly. So every month you got a new rate based on what the 10-year the tre treasury yield was doing. So the 10-year yeah. treasury yield has lost its mind on the Friday before your new payment came out. That's what your new, your interest rate could be 20%. Okay. So what are some, what are some other conversations you've been having with clients and potential clients and, and realtors in regards to, you know, purchasing power and regards to interest rates in, you know, what's happening in the mortgage world, stuff like that. Well, first off, we're telling people right now is not a good time to lock in your interest rate. We are, we do anticipate um, the, the market to level out and go back down. Um, so I think earlier before we hopped on this call, I was saying, or I might even have said it while we were on, the rates barely have gone up. And so we expect them to slide back down. Will they go back down to where we were under 2% on a 15 year? Probably not, but 2.067 on a 15 year mortgage is still amazing. So it's, we do anticipate them to slide back down. So we're kind of holding steady on locking everybody's rates. Um, that's what we're seeing. Basically that's what everyone who predicts mortgage interest rates and kind of what the market's going to do is saying, hold tight, pump your brakes, don't panic. Um, and definitely make sure that you're consulting with a lender. If you have questions on what that does to your buying power, just pick up the phone, give me a call. You can reach out to pretty much any lender and they can kind of tell you and educate you on what that's going to do for your next step. Um, in most cases, again, we're talking two coffees, like it's nothing. It's, it's not, we're not talking hundreds of dollars like we've talked on here before, what 2019 and 2018 look like versus now. You're still going to be able to go out and afford the home that you're looking at. It's You just might have to skip brass tax one day. That cut deep. <laughs> yeah, she went in um, on that. <laughs> that cut deep. Um, let me plug brass tax, a wonderful cafe and restaurant in East Downtown located off of Live Oak. And uh, they have wonderful <laughs> matcha lattes, cold brew, uh, nitro cold brew, and great snacks. So thank you for bringing that up, Paige. I'm glad you wanted to highlight a local business here in Houston. That's, that's very kind of you. Uh, we have a quick question here. Um, wants to know if there's flood areas looking for an apartment now, knowing what areas to avoid. So as far as flood areas, um, what I would recommend would be um, to look up the FEMA flood maps. Um, and that's at FEMA.gov, um, and they provide information on areas that have a higher probability of flooding. Um, you know, in regards to flooding in Houston, obviously this is something that has, you know, occurred a lot over the past, um, a, a lot in the past, uh, but also in the, um, in the past few years. So I would recommend, you know, always doing a higher level apartment. Um, you know, second or third floor, uh, both from kind of a safety perspective as well as, um, you know, just for uh, probability of flooding. Um, but 
um, the the flood maps are a good place to to at least start to understand what the probability of areas to flood in are in Houston. Um, Allison said, not the brass tacks. Speaking of brass tacks, they also have really good breakfast tacos. They're delicious. Um, and I am I hate to, to say today is yet another day that we are not eating tacos. Um, so that is something that I'm sad about. Um, if you guys are um, watching and you live in Houston, what is your favorite place to get tacos? That is something that I would like to know. Um, we, the entire goal of this and the, the name of this is Taco Tuesday. So the goal was for us to meet up, eat tacos and talk real estate. Um, and we've done one of those three things. We have talked real estate. We have not met up and we have not eaten tacos. So kind of disappointing. Um, cool. How... I'm trying to think of something else to, to talk about. What uh, what have you guys been seeing as far as mortgage applications? Are they still high? Are you guys still seeing people refinancing? Like what's what's happening in, in your world? Yeah, so I mean, mortgage, um, I was actually gonna pull up our data. I just actually sent it out to the team this afternoon. Um, our applications are still up over 70% from last year. We, we had a crested at about 100%. So if we had, you know, 50 applications this time last year, we had a hundred. Um, and so we're at about 70% right now. So we still are seeing a pretty high uptick. I know that last week we saw a substantially lower amount of applications. Obviously no one had power. Um, the only people that actually filled out an application on Monday through Thursday, I had four out of town clients um, and because they, they had power. <laughs> So um, that we did see definitely a decline, but then this weekend we saw basically everybody who I guess didn't have the opportunity to fill it out last week or last week definitely took advantage of that. Um, so we still are seeing a pretty substantial amount of buyers, as you can, as you know from literally 1.6 or 1.7 months of inventory on the market. It's it's bananas. I've been waiting to say that this whole time. <laughs> B I feel like you need like bananas for swing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh like post production effects that could go into that. Like she says it and then you hear Gwen Stefani come over, you know, in the background. I don't know what the copyright rules are around that and you have bananas falling down the screen. So there's definitely a lot to be done. Um so, you know, we'll we'll work on that, but like on a live, I don't know, you know, that that's necessarily something that can happen. Um, so I like the idea, um, but yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> is this is the song called Bananas? I don't. Is it? Gwen, are, have we failed, Gwen Stefani? I think it's like the B A N A. I think it's like spelled out, right? B A N A. Uh, I'm gonna type in Gwen Stefani. So, anyways, um, what's? Oh, man. Where are we at? I will Venmo someone fifty dollars if they can give us the, <laughs> the banana song from Gwen Stefani. Anyone? That's the song. It's Hollow Back Girl. That's it. Oh uh, man! Oh, it's Hollow Back Girl. Oh, I completely forgot that it was that one. Yeah. Anyways, um, so Allison asked. I've been asked recently how our recent snowpocalypse compares to Harvey in regards to our real estate impact. Would love to get your professional insight. Um, so this is a. There's a lot of uh, parts to this question. I think are a lot of parts to this answer in regards to this question. So, um, you know, I think some of the things that we've seen as far as natural disasters in Houston, which is is kind of. Um, counterintuitive, I guess would be the right word to say, but basically what happened in Harvey in a lot of the areas that were impacted, right, is that an entire street may have flooded or say a half of a street may have flooded. So we saw in a lot of neighborhoods in Houston, in Southwest, in North, in all over town that like, depending on the elevation of a neighborhood, half a street may have flooded. So like maybe the, the West side did, but not the East side, maybe the North side did, but not the South side, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then what we see is basically those homes that did flood got gutted you know, depending on the severity of damage, it maybe got gutted all the way down to the studs or whatever, but a lot of things in that home got replaced, right? And then you start to see those homes that have brand new plumbing, electrical, you know, drywall, all of the things start to see values higher than homes that didn't flood, like in some neighborhoods, right? Um, so that was something that I thought was very counterintuitive, but like in regards to the real estate impact, like 
um, you know, for us with homes that were under contract, right, for both our buyers and our sellers, we were quick to see, you know, if there was any damage done in the home um, and to see if, um, you know, there was any work that needed to be done in those homes, right? So that was kind of step one. Um, you know, so from a buyer's perspective, if you're going and looking out to buy a home, um, obviously a seller would need to disclose if something happened during, you know, the storm as far as, you know, damage to the property um, and what was done to remediate and fix that. Um, so I think that's kind of part of it. Um, I think that, you know, as we just said, right now we're sitting at, uh, you know, 15,000 15, listings in Houston. So we're at 1.7 months of inventory. So like whether homes are being people are waiting to put their homes on the market. Um, we still have like a lot of inventory that we need to make up for, for the amount of buyers that are in the market today. Um, so I don't know that it's necessarily going to slow down the real estate market. Um, I think that there is, was obviously a little bit of a pause last week. Uh, the market update that I did on Saturday, like sales were sales, pendings and new listings were all at about half of what we normally see. Um, so, you know, that was definitely, some impact, but like as far as lasting impact, I don't know that we'll see that. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? I mean, yeah, I think it'll be like another week before we can probably tell. I mean, just to see what those numbers are going to be. Um, I know we've spent a lot of us on the team has a couple of days just reaching out to past clients and reaching out to people that we've been working with to check to see how their current homes are. Um, and of course, there's you know, there's quite a few people that have some damage, but some of them are minor damage compared to Harvey, um, like small breaks that were fixed very quickly and what they were able to turn the water off um, quickly. And then some of them, you know, it is a little bit more substantial, but I don't think it's, it's not a flood. So whenever you're talking to an insurance adjuster, it's like it's important to kind of, to, you know, keep in mind that it's not a flooded event. It is just, it is a, uh, a water damage event due to weather. So, yeah, I would have to agree for sure. I mean, all of that. I, mean, I definitely think like you were saying, Nikki, I think it will be next week before we're able to tell from like what listings were pulled from the market and, and stuff like that. And one, one thing we have to kind of remember, there was no stopping Harvey. There was no turning off the water. There was no putting some towels down. There was no just getting in your car and leaving and going to mom's house. Like it was a horrific, I have goosebumps right now. It's like a horrific natural disaster that totally changed not only just our landscape, but kind of history. I mean, yes, this is definitely another historic, yet another historical event for Houston. <laughs> so like we're, we're about one a year right now. Maybe we got this, maybe we got this year's historical event out of the way. We're done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we do have to remember that, that this is something that was in, Thank God for most people, it was something that was as easy as I've got to spend a thousand dollars and get my pipes replaced and replace this piece of sheetrock and paint it. Um, I know some people weren't as lucky, but um, I, I feel like, you know, it was definitely a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Allison says, I'm tired of living in unprecedented times. I could use some precedented times as well, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, and I think that, um, some of the impact that we we have already seen from you know a week of intermittent power and you know people being displaced and things like that is some delays in kind of the um, uh, the closing timelines and the the escrow process for a lot of properties because I know you know with roads frozen and people without power and internet and things like that like a lot of appraisals weren't happening a lot of pre approvals were taking longer than usual you know uh even consultations with clients things like this like weren't happening um you know we had a lot of appointments that we had to push from last week to this week um just because of you know uh power and and you know things like that um yeah. cool no <laughs> and yeah no shower so uh, yeah yeah that was wild <laughs> Yeah, um, it was like a camping trip minus the camping <laughs> in your home that you pay for. Yeah. Um, so, okay, let's let's pivot a little bit. Let's talk about camping. Um, when was the last time you went camping? Last week. <laughs> no, like, when was the last time you went camping and like slept outside for real, for real, for real? Gosh, I was. It's been a, It's been 
whenever I was in college, we used to go all of the time because I, w- I went to Texas State. And so we were right off the river and we went all of the time because it was like the cheap but fun thing to do. And you could take all of your friends and it w- you could go and have a good time. But it's probably been a, a decade. Yeah. 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 I would love um, to go where I could like control, you know, the elements that I'm in. I think like doing it on like a river or spring is the way to go. Cause then you still feel like, you know, like you're getting in the river and everything. So yeah. They're taking a shower and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> still, still somewhat clean. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went camping probably like six years ago and we went down to Canyon Lake and it was like hot out during the day. And, um, you know, so we were like out on the boat, like, you know, having a great old time. And we went to sleep and like a storm blew in, you know, as they do in hill country. And we woke up and the wind was howling so bad. It was like hitting the tent down onto us. So that's what woke me up. And like our buddy was starting his truck to try to pull it around to stop the wind from hitting the tents. But we thought he was leaving. So I woke up and was like, oh, he's leaving us, you know, like freaking out. And it was so cold. Um, and so the next day I was in like a hoodie and pants and like leggings and like gloves. Uh, so it's just kind of crazy, like how quickly, as we said, how quickly the weather changes in Texas. Definitely. Um, cool. So if you guys have any questions in regards to the home buying process or anything Houston related, please drop it in the comments below. Very much appreciated um, so that we don't just ramble on and talk about things like camping um, during this live stream. So there's that. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What advice would you guys give to a buyer client that is looking to purchase in today's market? Looking to purchase where? Sorry, say that again. In in today's market. Oh, in today's market. A buyer market. looking to buy in the current market conditions that we're in today. Well, I think going back to Paige, what she was saying earlier, I mean, talk to her, get kind of a game plan set up as far as like interest rates like where they're at currently and where they're going to be at. And then, you know, obviously we set up a game plan to move forward with like a search. In there. Paige, other than talking to you about interest rates, what else would you uh, suggest to a buyer looking in today's market? Um, Definitely be patient because you might not get the first home that you're put an offer on, but that doesn't mean that that home was for you. That's what I try to remind people of is that, just because you didn't get the first one doesn't mean the right one's not out there. And a lot of times you might feel like the first one was the right one. And then the right one ends up being home, the the sixth house that you see. And um, so I just try to remind people to be patient. And then I always try to remind people that, you know, in some cases, like, Right now, whenever I'm having my buyer consultation with people, I ask them for two, I ask them a bunch of questions. There's the whole list I ask, but my two probably biggest question that I ask is what's a comfortable payment and what's a stretch payment. And then I want to send them estimates on that because right now a stretch payment, hopefully your income is increasing every year, but with rates so low, it almost makes sense to sensibly put yourself in a, obviously not a crazy stretch payment, but it's it sensibly might make sense for you to be in a stretch payment. And if that is, let's just say you're, you're looking at 300, but a stretch payment might be 400, well, you have a lot less buyers in the 400 market and up. And so does it make sense for you to maybe look at that stretch payment? And so that's something that I've started to kind of utilize to see, um, to see kind of what that, what does that look like and, and how, how do we best serve our clients? and looking not just for right now, but 10 years down the road when they're still in their same home, they're probably not going to get a a sub three interest rate. Heck, they're probably not even gonna get a 3% interest rate, to be honest, like, yeah. I don't wanna live in that world. Yeah. (laughs) So the reality is it's like, does a stretch payment make sense? And so that's what we're trying to kind of more, kind of educate people on what that looks like, not just so being so short-minded as to what does it look like right now, but what does it look like in five years? Does this payment still makes sense and are you still going to love your home in five years? Are you gonna have outgrown it? And if you would have bought a home that was $50,000 more, could you have stayed there for five more years? Yeah, no, I, mean, I, mean, I definitely think is key. I definitely think that that's um, kind of a good, a good mindset. I would say almost even on the flip side of that, right? Um, you know, depending on what price point you're looking in, if you're seeing a lot of multiple offers, it may make sense also to dial your search back a little bit so that you can 
uh, pay a little bit more than than list, right? So if like you're only pre approved for if you're only pre approved for 400k, for example, and you're looking at all homes in the 400, you know, 350 to 400 range, maybe it makes sense to dial that back to 325 to 375, so that you have a little bit more wiggle room. So just something Definitely. to think about. Um, I always I always laugh when Ryan and I were going to buy our first home. Um, you know, we were we were looking at houses and like I don't remember what we were pre-approved for, but like we were looking at houses like only at that amount. Like say it was 350. So we we're like only looking at houses for 350. And we're like, what are we doing here? Like, why are we trying to make this like our goal? Like this is the limit, not the goal. You know, so that's something that like yeah. I always tell clients. I'm like, oh, I got pre-approved for 400 k So I'm gonna look at 400 k houses. I'm like, but what are you comfortable spending? Right. Cause like let's let's like think about this a little bit more before, you know, so that comfort and stretch payment, I think are are um really good terms to put it into. Um, because you know, I was out there just like, oh, I'm going to buy a $350,000 house. That's what I'm pre-approved for, you know. Um, and we try to send people estimates, like starting at their comfortable payment, kind of that mid-range and then that stretch payment. So they can see, like, what does that mean in terms of purchasing power? Because that, in some cases, some people are way off and not in a, and in a good way. Like, they, they think they can purchase less. And then in some cases, you know, you've got to wrangle them in. Like, hey, we're not getting a million-dollar house at, at $1,000 a month. Like, and I have them. If it is, yeah. you let me know because I'm buying it. <laughs> yeah, let me know where I can find one of those. Yeah, yeah. all three of us are gonna buy it. So, um, I think it's Maybe. just like being realistic, getting, being educated, being realistic, being educated, and like being flexible. Like those are the three tips that I could give, w would give to any buyer, not just a first time home, but like any buyer in the market today and any seller even. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, and that's something too, like just talking about being, you know, educated and flexible and, and things like that. Like, I think that um, a lot of clients, sellers are like, oh, well, if the market's so hot, then let's price it, you know, 50 grand over what, you know, the last sale was. And I think the thing to, that I would caution you, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about selling your home and you're, you're thinking about that today is, you know, we're still going to need a buyer that's going, going to be willing to pay that. So that's the first hurdle to get, to get over, right? If you're able to find that buyer and they're getting a loan on their property, the property still is going to need to appraise, right? So the third party appraiser is going to need to come up to the property and, and be able to have, you know, comparable sales from the neighborhood to support that sales price. So, you know, unless you have a buyer that has enough cash to come up with perhaps that $50,000 difference, um, it may not be something that, that, can actually happen. So, right, you've got to find the buyer first and then it's got to appraise second. Um, so, you know, we've definitely seen prices increase over the past 12 months or over the past year in Houston, but not to the tune of like, hey, let's throw a number up and see if it sticks. Um, so just something that, you know, we've encountered with a few conversations lately. But with that being said as well, like if you've thought about selling but don't want to put your home on the market, let us know. And, you know, if we have buyers that are looking for that, you know, type of home, we may be able to work something out. So, um, you know, just, just something to think about there. Definitely. I think that's something that people, people might think that their home is not desirable, but the reality is everybody has something that everybody wants. So like, not everybody has something that everybody wants. Everyone has something that someone wants. And so what, what you might think is not desirable um, might actually be desirable to someone. And so keeping an open mind to a realtor knocking on your door saying, hey, I have someone who wants to buy your house. Here's what we're willing to offer you. That's not crazy. Like I've actually had a couple of contracts come in, in the past couple of months for realtors doing that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, um, we've had a lot of uh, good experience in reaching out to, to homeowners and neighborhoods to be like, hey, our buyers pre-approved. They're looking for a house in your home based on, you know, the descriptions on, you know, MLS uh, fits or, you know, tax records fits what they may be looking for. You know, can we preview it? Um, you know, and that's that's something that has has uh, served us well in the past for our buyer clients. Um, so, yeah, no, it's definitely uh, one of the creative ways we, we look for for homes for our clients when there are none. Cool. Get um, yeah, for sure. What other items did you guys want to talk about today? Anything else? Nikki, you got anything? I feel like Nikki's like the silent but deadly type. Like she's really quiet, but like she's taking all this information in and she's gonna like, out. Ready. <laughs> Yeah, I um, think okay. I think we just need to. I, I think 
kind of circling back to rates and the market, I definitely think 2021 is going to be a wild year still, still to come. Obviously, we, I mean, we're what, not even two months in, which is also first off crazy to think about that we are almost eight weeks in or are eight weeks into the new year. But um, I definitely think that 2021 still has a lot to offer in terms of real estate and the market and what we'll see. And, and I think that it'll be interesting, but in a good way. Um, definitely. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I definitely think that um, it's been an interesting uh, run for the real estate market over the past 12 months. So it'll be interesting to see where the next 12 months takes us for sure. Um, if you all have any questions in regards to purchasing a home in Houston um, or in regards to areas to live in Houston, anything like that, um, feel free to, I'm going to drop some, um, drop some contact info down here. That is Nikki's information there. And I am getting my mortgage professional. Nikki, I really Nikki. love your hat. I just need to tell you that. You need to have one. It's on brand. You know, you know. If there's one thing that we're good for at the Movement of Texas team, it <laughs> is <movement>. on brand <laughs> items. Literally today, I was thinking, uh, totally off topic, I was thinking, also, if you're an embroiderer in Houston, or if anyone has a good local embroiderer, I definitely would like their information. I want an old school a crew neck sweatshirt with like oh. our logo embroidered on it. That's like that totally be, 90s and I'm digging the vibe. Um, that would I've be got, really cute. So the, um, I don't, I'm not wearing it obviously, but I have like a vest and a jacket that I got embroidered. Um, yeah. I will ask, um, so I'm sending you a group message right now. I just would love to get a lot of things embroidered. I just feel like embroidery is totally coming back and I am here for it. Well, I mean like the hat that Nikki's wearing, it's embroidered. So there's that. Yeah. Um, anyways, so, Paige and Nikki's information is dropped in the comments below uh, for you to email them or text or call them if you all have any questions in regards to real estate here in Houston. Um, and yeah, if you have any embroiderer recommendations, please feel free to drop them to you know either Paige or to Nikki. Um, all right, cool guys. Well, I appreciate y'all taking cool. some time today to chat in re yeah. about real estate. It's been real. Yeah, oh, the next time we meet, it'll be March. And one Holy day we moly. will have talkers. Next, the next Tuesday or I'm quitting. I was almost <laughs> gonna say, I was almost gonna say that we should just like eat them here. Um, Cause like I just finished a meeting before this, but like it's the office, it's kind of boring. So I mean, my threat threatening remarks stick. They do. All right, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining. We'll see you next Taco Tuesday.